Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it.
hello, my name is Latasha Thomas and I am here to discuss with you all Marie Della Thomas' new album entitled Marie. And so I am, I am here with my parents, Robert Thomas and Marie Della Thomas. And so let's get started. Um, so Marie Della Thomas, so the album that you have now is going to be entitled Marie. Can you tell us what your inspiration was? Well, God had blessed me back in 2001, Latasha, as you know, to release our debut album, which was entitled Rise and Live. And in that album, it was like a compilation of a lot of artists and songwriters. So I didn't want it to be like a selfish project. It's just a charge that God gave me. So I recorded my mother's music, Lydia Stowers, and the late Bishop Charles Crawford. We had a chance to not just sing his song, but feature him in it. And then my, my oldest brother, the late Johnny Ray Stowers, we sang his song. So for this particular project, I feel like I just want to be able to give and share with everybody. I'm writing all of the songs that's, that's featured on it. And then also I'm sharing the gift that God has given me to the world. So this is this project is really um, very dear to my heart. I believe these are songs that God had blessed me with. and. Most of the songs we sing, we sing them all over, mm -hmm. and um, yes. it's been a blessing. <clears throat> okay, so um, I did want to also go more into like the personal aspect of it all too, um, because it seems like you're doing a lot, <laughs> and I, I have, we have to write it down. It was so much. Um, so you're a recording artist, a producer, a businesswoman, an actress, a full figured fashion model, mm -hmm. and just recently became a college professor. So how do you wear those mini hats? It's a lot. <laughs> you know, just coming from my background, um, working in corporate America for like 30 some odd years, and um, I wanted to do a lot more things that I enjoy. And I know that, you know, I based my life on Philippians 4.13, said I could do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And I believe that, and I believe, let's just go ahead and do everything that God has told us to do, do it all. You know, and um, so God did, you know, give me um, the opportunity, many opportunities that I never even expected, you know. And um, like you said, wearing a whole lot of hats, raising all of, all of my four children, including yourself. And so you guys have grown. So I said, this is a great time, you know, okay. if God presents something to me. Like, for example, when my husband and I first released um, Rise and Live all the way back in 2001, we wanted to find where different mediums that we could promote the album. So he had saw a little outlet where it said, you know, Gospel Fest was going to be happening and they had auditions for people to be a part of it. So I'm not really that, that, that strongly in the competition, but I said, oh, okay, we get involved with this so we can promote the album. But as a result, I went in for the audition and in the audition, I did not know that in that room was A. Curtis Farrell, who was the actual producer of Gospel Fest. And um, let's just put it this way. He let me know. Um, he gave me a phone call and said, okay, we're not going to put you in the competition. We want you to be a part of the Gospel Fest McDonald's, their choir. So I'm an original member of the choir. But as well, he cast me in, in quite a few of his uh, plays off Broadway. So God has been good. That's why I got involved in different things like that. And I said, well, let's do it all to the glory of God. And then at the same time, in conjunction with the things that we had set out to do. So we just finished um, talking about all of your many accomplishments, all the things that you're doing. And so I want to get dad involved. Um, we, I think I, I speak for my brothers also when I say that, you know, you all are our role models. So can you just kind of like give us some insight on how you work together. What is your motivation? Good question. Good question. Wow, what is our motivation? Well, we love music. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we love music. And when I married mom, your mom, um, her families, they're just all musicians. And so when we got together, we always said that we wanted to um, someday do our own album, mm -hmm. um, create our own songs, have concerts, have our own business. These are some of the things that we said before we even got married. And then when we got married, and I know I'm pronouncing married differently, <laughs> but um, yeah, um, when we got married, um, then um, we started to embark 
on those things. And I gotta tell you, thank God things are happening. So my, my wife's music is out there, her writings are out there, um, and we're just loving the, the journey. Just loving. Okay. And so um, I do, I want to get back into the, the music, like you said. Um, and I just want to mention like some of the things that, you know, um, we already heard from Marie. Um, and that is like songs like Good Time, I Want to Do Right, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, Can't Find Nobody Like Jesus. And um, we did somewhat of like short films as opposed to just kind of like videos. So, um, Mom, can you talk about, you know, what inspired you to do short films instead of like a, you know, a normal kind of like video, like what? Well, me and Rob, when we get thoughts, we did like, um, I mean, sometimes we might take a trip go, or go on for a car ride. And we just kind of have our little brain trust thoughts that we, you know, we have, we're a team. So a little brain trust team. And we come up with different things. So I wanted to, I wanted, first of all, as an accomplished actress, God had blessed me to do some acting. So I wanted to to make my film a little bit, I didn't want to just release the video. So I thought that to do short film. This is something that I had in, in my spirit to do anyway. So I said, wouldn't it be good for the release of our videos? We have a short film, kind of let people into our world as the Thomas family into our world, how we work together, how we go to the rehearsal studio. You know, for example, Good Time, we showed us actually literally working in the studio. We did the same thing for I Want to Do Right. And then we had some clips where Rob is like playing the, the organ. And then later on, you see us actually in the concert. And then for Good Time also, just with like our family get together, that was actually my 50th birthday celebration. And my father was saying to me one day, he said, it's time for some joy. He said, we don't been through so much, but we have to know how to enjoy ourselves. And, and, right. then, and then that's when, you know, the thought of good time and the inspiration for that came. So I'm excited that I, you know, when I, God gives me something in my spirit, I took on the challenge and I love working behind the scene with the editing, you know, so as the executive producer, you know, once we get all the film together, then I have this canvas that I can create and, and create like a kind of theme and a story and then let people understand what we're talking about. And that's what we're doing with the, with Standing on the Rock. Sweet, sweet. So now that you mentioned Standing on the Rock, let's go in a bit more about your inspiration for that song. I think for me, like being that I do background for you, it's like one of And my those, stage manager. Yeah, those are like <laughs> one of the staple songs that I think that you have where everybody's just on their feet, just celebrating and praising God together. Right. So can you tell us about more about Standing on the Rock, your inspiration for it, and what, how do you feel like God is going to use that song for the future? And, and it's really the, the reason why we're here today to, to really talk about that. So. Well, with, I can tell you this, um, in our travels, God blessed us to be able to go out and minister and go into different cultures, go into the various um, ministries. And for example, Harvest Army, you know? And so I, one of the things I noticed is I love how they praise God um, with um, the different um, culture, uh, it's Calypso, those different type of music. Like soca, soca. soca and, yeah, exactly. And then, not to mention that our music producer, Carl Marriott, um, is from Jamaica. So I was like, you know, come on, help us out. And I was using the word reggae. He said, that's not reggae. I'll show you what, what you need to do. Yeah. But um, when he was singing this song, one of the songs, you know, every now and then, I try to sing songs when I go to different ministries, songs that people can relate to. So we were singing a song, Thou Has Been a Shelter for Me, mm -hmm. and that was good. But then one day I'm walking in the street, and then it just came to me. I'm standing on the rock. And I was like, oh my God, like God just gave me the whole song. And I'm just walking down the street singing it. I'm standing. And then I said, okay, so we know we know the hymn, you know, um, standing on the, on the rock with... Um, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And I like that because, you know, it's nothing like the hymns. Um, in Harlem, I have been given the title by certain radio announcers. One of them was the late Bill. 
DeFaucet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and um, Mr. He, Bill. Yeah, Bill had the 3G experience, and he's also one of the first to put my music on the radio, WHTR. And um, he gave me the title of Tomologist. Yes. And that's because I love the him. So, and also, my dear big brother, A. Curtis Farrow, he told me, he said, a gospel album is not a gospel album if you don't put at least one hymn. You know, he said, if you don't put a hymn on it, then you, it's not, he said, I don't see it as a gospel album. So, um, yeah. And, you know, I just thank God for all of those that has inspired me and my parents raised me. And my mother always had the hymn book in the house. So I, I told Rob, I said, I want to incorporate songs that could be a blessing, but people just automatically join in. So when we go out and we are performing or we, you know, singing at various churches, singing Standing on the Rock, when we get to the hymns, everybody's already knowing the song. You know, my hope is built on nothing. That rock is Jesus, the only one. That rock is Jesus, he's right. the one, That's you right. know? And so I'm just excited to finally get this video out. Standing on the Rock is already becoming international. You know, I was like a shock to see how it's being taken out of um, out of the states. You yeah. know, and, other countries. Yeah, yes. and other countries. so God is good. Yeah. And so I know too much okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. The real reason why we're here, we want to go behind the scenes yes. in the short film for Standing on the Rock. So, Mom, can you give us some insight? on that day or the days <laughs> that you were behind the scenes working on standing on the ground well behind the scenes this project is definitely a family project um and it's so good to the bible says uh, behold how good how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity and our family is definitely the manifestation of that and yeah. i was so excited to get even this time behind the camera, the camera directors we had, none other than my son Joshua, Darrell Thomas, and April McCamry, which I'm so proud of my niece. She is she done a lot of short films herself. So I thought it would be so good. And these two are the two youngest grandchildren in the family. And the Stowers family, like we have like a lot of great grands as well, but these are the two youngest of the grandchildren, so I was so excited to be able to let them be able to show forth their talents. And they did an excellent job. And then, of course, yourself, Latasha. Tasha's my stage manager. A lot of people don't know that. Some people are like, well, who is this young lady telling us what to do? And she's been my stage manager for ever since we started doing Gospel Music is Driving Together, like since 2010, and does an excellent job. And like, this a lot of the work that we've done ourselves as a family, but this time, like I also invited my nephew, Johnny Ray Styles Jr., who is also uh, a becoming gospel recorded artist, and he got a brand new song out now called You're All I Need, but um, Johnny was working behind the scenes with us as a producer and helping us with the scenes, and then also my big sister came on set when we went to, what was the name of the place, Tasha? It's, um, yeah. the, I believe it's, the, it's either the Admire or the Admire yeah. Gardens. Yeah, Admire Gardens. Yeah. And Tasha actually found this location and it's just phenomenal place right there up in Yonkers. And um, so we was on that set. Uh, first of all, we loved the set, um, but like I said, my big sister was there also to help us with ideas. And anybody know Linda? Linda's very talented. She does plays. She's uh, uh, working on her first book. And so I'm very excited about that's coming up also. So we had all of these people together. And then last but certainly not least, the love of my life, Rob. Rob did all of the music and he produced all of the songs. And um, we was all there. My son Bobby was there just to give us moral support. And so, like I said, this project um, was definitely a family effort. Yes, and I think was. people will be able to see behind the scenes how talented my kids are. Proud of them. And my all of my nephews and nieces, they know I call them my babies. Those are all my babies. And they all had a part of it. And so we're just excited. And I mean, once they see the work, you're going to say, wow. You know what I'm saying? I think, you know, to God be the glory. That's all I can say. All I can say is that Stand on the Rock video was done in such a beautiful place. Mm-hmm. You see a lot of rocks representing, you know, you know, 
Jesus being the rock. I mean, you see the pictures of the rocks, the mountains, the water up front. Oh, that's so beautiful. So when you, when, this, when you see this video, you're gonna see, you're gonna really Some like of the places that Tasha wanted me to go, cause we actually, for this shoot, uh, believe it or not, um, that just for the garden, we were there for two days. But we did have other scenes, other places, but um, some of the scenes that my sister had wanted me to do, I was like, I really didn't want her to hurt herself, but she was right there with me. And um, I don't want to tell it all. I want everybody to be able to see some of the things. But some of the sets were absolutely beautiful with Just the beautiful. water wow. and the children. I would say all of my kids were blown away. And my niece and Joshua was very excited. They were like, oh, oh, oh. Like, as we went from one scene to the next. And we got it up. We wrapped it up in two days there. So God was really. I, I feel like his presence was there. He said, well, there's two or three gathered in his name. What did he say? He would be in the midst. Right. So he was there with us that day. So last but not least, I do want to ask you, where can people pick up your music? Well, you can find it at your most digital outlets. Um, Standing on the Rock is most definitely on iTunes. It's on Amazon.com, the name of few, Spotify, all of those digital outlets. And also, you know, people can visit my website, um, mariedellathomas.com, and you can get, get to see some of the other things I'm doing in terms of, like, as the fashion model. I have everything on there. Um, and God has blessed us also. Every concert that we do, we have videos. And those, if people are interested in it, they can get in touch with us. That's Just get good. on our website. All the information is there. I think I have one over here. Yeah. <laughs> What year was that? I'm not sure that that's one. This is one from 2016. Right. And so God blessed us to be able. You know what I wanted, Tasha? You know, what we want to do for the gospel extravaganza, we call it the music and arts gospel extravaganza. Because I wanted, I guess because I graduated from music and arts, you know, I love the arts. I love museums. But then I love the arts in terms of dancing. The Bible said that David danced before the Lord with all of his might. That's and right. so we wanted to incorporate the praise dance. And a lot of people don't even know that you studied dance when you was in Spain for a little while. And then you've gotten a chance to do some studying of dance here. But I asked Tasha and April a couple of years ago, would they do some praise dances for the gospel extravaganza? And I gave them the name um, divine praise dancers. So we call them DPD. And hopefully you guys will get back together and do some more things. But I was so proud of them that they was able to um, perform in the gospel reading extravaganza. And we wanted to present the arts. We had rap artists, we had dancers, and um, people that were performing poetry and what have you. And then we had a stage to do it all. So God was really good. You know, we could talk so about Tasha, that. can I ask you a question? Or ask Marie a question? Um, would you say Standing on a Rock is, could be a, a hymn song as well as just a regular devotional song for churches? Oh, you asked me? Yes. Sure, like I said, um, Standing on a Rock, and what I did was to write hymns and incorporate those hymns into it. I wanted to feature hymns that I know everybody knows. So, but the but the, the main message is just to say that you're standing on the rock and then that rock is Jesus. But then we, at the end of the song, we give him the highest praise and we invite everybody in to sing hallelujah. And we're, whenever we sing that to the glory of God, we always invite the audience in. But Tasha, you know from your, from your experience singing backup, I usually try to use sing Stand on the Rock last because God just takes over. Amen. Sure. People come into the aisle, they dance, and you know, to the glory of God. And we, we know God is going to take it even further than what it is right now. Now, let me ask you that. Can I say something, Tasha? One more uh, thing. Oh, no, one more thing. One more thing? Oh, I'm sorry. I know this is your show. But um, <clears throat> has um, Stay on the Rock uh, gotten any hits um, outside of New York? Yeah, it's, it's international. We got a chance in. Um, I think they need to know that. Yeah, we got a chance uh, where people have reached out to us, even from the United Kingdoms. I mean, it's going, I saw it, you know, it's selling in Japan. And so God is really good. I mean, it's, it's going further than I ever thought it would have. So, sure. information that you need about this artist, thank you for joining us. We're taking us. bookings now. Yes, thank you for joining us. God bless. 
So mom, what is the message that you want people to get from your music? The message that I want people to get from my music, I want them to know that when you put God in your life, you accept the Lord as your personal savior, everything else will fall in place. The Bible says in John 3.16, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the foundation, number one, of my salvation. You know, thank God I've been serving the Lord for a while now. And I just want to get the message out in music. So, Mom, um, what message do you want people to get from your music? What message that I want people to get from my music? The message of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, somebody asked me one time, why did you choose gospel? Well, I chose to say gospel music because I believe in what I sing about. Um, and number one, I believe that God could do anything but fail. And with the song Standing on the Rock, um, it's based on Matthew 16 and 18, when Jesus is talking to Peter and he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, right? And that lets you know that if Jesus is the chief cornerstone, right? Nothing can break the foundation, amen? And so that's what I want people to get when they, when they listen to my music. I want them to hear about the love of God. Um, gospel music is the message of Jesus. It's the good news about Jesus. Um, and so that's why I love singing gospel music and I love singing the hymns. But more importantly, when God gives me a song, um, personal song that I share with the world, I want that message to come back about the love of God. 